All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about the pitfalls of buying a project car that's had previous work done to it and how it can be a disaster once you get it home and take a look at it. So I just acquired the 69 Plymouth GTX. It's a Roadrunner body, 68-69 style Roadrunner, but GTX is a trim level. And this car is B5 Blue, big block car, and I just picked it up. And it's had some work done to it, so let me show you what I mean by watch what cars you buy and what the work's done. So this car has had a brand new AMD floor put in it, which is nice, and it's also had a rear foot wells put in it. So it's got a brand new floor, but the, the way it was put in is horrendous. And what I mean by that is, look at these welds. Whoever did this was not a welder whatsoever. Horrible welds. I'll go underneath the car, but we got a huge overlap on this rear pan. We used zip screws to locate it, but then they just kind of booger welded the entire front there. Look how awful the welds are over there. I mean, it's nice. It's got a new floor. It's got terrible welds to the rocker panel along here. So a lot of this needs to be ground down and cleaned up. And here it's not welded. Some places I'm going to add some more welds. Back here, the welds are just terrible on everything. You can see the original rear floor section has been cut out and has rust in it and it was poorly welded. They've got part of an inner rocker panel there with horrible welds over there. We've had an entire replacement rocker put on this side which actually has the correct indentation on it here so the other side's been fixed is incorrect and it probably needs a new rocker panel on that side. But as you can see, the work to install it is terrible. Screws left in there, weld splatter everywhere, brackets cut off uh, oddly. This car has been hit on this side. The door jam here is full of body filler. You can see the body filler there. See the body filler coming through here? An old injury where it was smashed and filled in and pulled back out. It probably needs a new door jam on the side. You can see cracks in the body filler in the paint. And actually when they put the rocker panel in, they cut it too short. It's got a huge gap around there. Terrible welds everywhere putting the rocker panel in. So it needs repair there. The frame rails. This one has been capped with some kind of capping kit over rusty frame rails. They're rusted on the inside. You can see over there there's they doubled up the metal. You just can't plate over rust. It'll just rust out on the inside. It's got horrible uh, welds holding it together. This side has the rear of the frame rail unplated, but it's got rust inside it here. You can see these rust holes here. And then they scabbed on a rail out of another car in a, in a section of floor where the leaf spring mounts. And uh, we'll go under there and check it out. But I've set the trunklet. I've set the trunklet on the back of the car, and it's sitting on the Dutchman panel. So we sight down through the car. The, the deck lid appears to be level with the car. But as you can see on the back here, it's touching the driver's side frame rail, and on the passenger side frame rail, there's about two inches of gap. So the frame rails are bent, or one of the frame rails is bent. I believe it's the driver's side one is bent up. You see this buckled panel here. Since there's no enforcement reinforcement here, I think the panel, the frame rail is weak, and it's been bent up by the suspension on that side, about two inches. Underneath the car here, you can see where it's also buckled on the inside. I believe the whole frame rail is buckled on there. The floor support is just zip screwed into place on both sides, not welded. Here you can see this kit where they welded on over the frame rails, not welded all together. Just kind of booger welded over a rusty frame rail down here. It's in bare metal on the bottom. There's actually some kind of tag on it from wherever it came from. But you see the horrible welds here burned through. Uh, they actually didn't even weld the frame rail to the floor there. This rear seat area, uh, there's a huge overlap which could have been trimmed off. They just left it wild and then and seam welded it there where that rust is. So all this overlap should be trimmed off to make it to the seam. You can see here there's multiple layers of metal in the rocker panel. It's actually had an inner rocker panel put on here, barely welded on. The floor supports for the seats are not plug welded to the inner rocker. They're just bolted to the floor with some bolts. And also the 
It, this car has new front frame rails, which are attached a little bit better than the floor. But the but the torsion mounts are not plug welded to the floor at all. They're just kind of floating in space. There's a bolt down the center of it holding it together, but the entire front frame rails and or the entire front rear uh, torsion bar mount is not welded to the floor at all. So that needs to be addressed. I said the front of this frame rail has been replaced. It's out of a red car. And you can see they just kind of like hacked the floor out here and triple kind of overlapped everything. And the problem, there's not there's nothing wrong with using factory parts out of another car, but this one's got rust holes in the bottom of it. So they used a frame rail that was compromised to begin with and butchered it in here. There's three layers of metal here, all, all horribly welded in there. So all this is a mess. Uh, same thing here, the floor supports are not, they're welded to the inner rocker, but they're not welded to the floor. And that side, the, uh, over there, the torsion bar mount is not even welded, it's just zip screwed. Up here, there's some drilling, spot welds been drilled out on the floor here, then they've been re-welded. But uh, essentially the back of the car is very, very weak. It needs to be fixed. So I knew when I bought this car that it had the floor put in it. And when I went to look at it, I did see the welds around the edge. I could see the welds around there and see the welds on the front frame rails, which are also new. They, uh, they're they tied in the shock towers okay, but they need some welding by the firewall. I didn't know the extent of the damage on the back of the floor there because the car had some, was full of parts and getting under the frame rails. Without setting the deck lid on it like here, I couldn't tell that the frame rails are bent just looking at the car. I'm pretty sure that rail's bent up. So what I paid for the car, um, I'm still happy with what I got with the amount of work that's done. I wasn't expecting the, the horrible workmanship that went into it, but what I can do is AMD makes the rear floor section for this car. They make the frame rails, they make all the, the bracketry, the inner wheelhouses, the outer wheelhouses. What I think I'm going to do is get the car level and square and true, brace the interior of the car, especially back here, measure the car, the body, make sure it's square to itself and um, everything, obviously stuff from here back is crooked with the suspension. But if I can get the car square from this package tray down, then I can replace the floor section, the inner wheelhouses, get that true to the car. With, once the floor is in place square, the new frame rails mount to the floor. So they'll come up and ha have a level surface amount to in the front. And then they can come out in the back. They should be level in the back if they mount level in the front. And then they just square them up on the car. Uh, then I can brace it down before I set it back on the suspension. I believe that's what happened is this frame rail where they tied it together was super thin and it bent this rail up. Uh, I think that's the high one here. Just the weight of having a car on this weakened frame rail bent, bent it up like that. So I don't want to put any weight back on the rails until I have the fronts tied in. Then I can put some support structure here just to, you know, hold them so the weight of the car is transferred up into the roof. Then once we get the, ready to put the quarters and the trunk floor and all that in, it'll be supported and it won't deflect. But it's, it's not too bad. It looks like it's a mess, but it should be able to be straightened out, not too, not with a lot of work. Um, it's nice to be able to get all the reproduction panels because you can essentially rebuild the entire car out of factory panels by putting them together and getting them to line up correctly. If you had to make all this by hand, you wouldn't really have anything to go off of and you just kind of have to do it like it was and try to hope for the best. But with all the replacement panels, you can pretty much put the entire car together with a couple of screws, line it all up, and then make sure the whole thing is straight. So I need to get the bottom of it straightened out and then get the quarter panels. I'll probably end up replacing the door jam on that side because of the damage on it. That'll be the easiest thing to do. I'll probably have to put a new rocker panel, outer rocker panel on this side. Uh, but I want to get the, what I'm going to do is work in inwards out. So I'm going to do inner wheelhouses, the floor, then the frame rails, and then work out to quarter panels, tail pan, uh, set the doors and all that stuff. So get the center structure square and then work out from there and then hang up the sheet metal. So that's something to be aware of. Like this, this door, this door closes pretty good. It's got filler in the door, but it closes good on the thing. I think the car is solid here from, you know, from here forward, the car is solid. It's got new frame rails in the front. 
uh, that were welded, not the best. It's got all new frame rails in the front, the K-members bolted in. Uh, the inner wheel houses and the shock towers, they need a little bit clean up welding on the back side, but these rails are one piece, both sides. They appear to be tied in okay, and if I need to do any cleanup on the welds, I can do that. But the front end seems to be good. The floor is tight in there, even though the welds are poor quality. Um, a little bit of cleanup work and stuff like that shouldn't be too bad, but I'm going to fit the floor better. The thing that is critical is welding the torsion bar mount to the floor. That should be plug welded all the way across here. And right now it's just got a couple of bolts holding it in there. So that needs to be drilled and plug welded the entire way to lock that in because that's what the car rides on is uses a floor for that. Overall it's fixable. Like this will clean up and you know it goes under carpet, but I'm gonna replace that floor section, replace this rocker, replace the frame rails, replace the rear floor section. Then get the quarter panels mounted up after all this is true and square and tight again. But as you can see, you know, this rail I think is the one that's bent up compared to there. And you can see this is bowed out. I think that's where it's bent. Once this new floor is put in, the rails touch all the way to here. If I lock this in, I'm going to measure from here to here. These are still attached to the floor, so the back of the car should be where it was originally. So if I measure down here, um, this floor goes to here, so uh, I can make a mount. It goes from here to the package tray, get this dialed in so the frame rails, like this mount, lock in. This will really stiffen the car back up with this new floor section replaced. Put the inner wheelhouse in here, that'll give you location of this to the floor and all that, it'll lock the inner wheelhouse in, lock into this structure, and then um, the frame rails can be put in and trued up on the back side. Once they're mounted tight here in the front, you know, they'll they'll have a little bit of play. You can dress a tail pin, but they should uh, square up fairly well. So when you're out looking at project cars, and especially if you can't do any your own work and you plan on having like a shop do it for you, if you went out and bought this car and said, hey, I got a good deal on this car and then took it to your shop expecting it to have, oh, it's got good frame rails, it's got good floors, it's all good, you know, everything's fine, it's had all new stuff replaced, and take it to your shop, your shop would be like, well, hopefully if it's a good shop, they'd be like, well, it was fixed, but it's fixed wrong, and now we need to spend extra money to fix it the right way and replace more parts to fix it the right way. You know, you could cost yourself thousands of dollars more if you don't do your own work and labor, and this is going to cost me... Uh, about $1,500 in extra sheet metal to fix the back half of this car. I saw it when I went to look at it. I still got a decent deal on the car. It's a two-door hardtop roadrunner, B-body hardtop roadrunner, so I still got a decent price on it for what I paid for it, but it is going to need all this replaced in the back to make it make it sound again. And that's just what you have to do. You get in over your head sometimes, or you, you think things are okay. Like, this is... New metal is great, but if it's put in horrible, it, like here, new metal is great, but if it's put in poorly, you know, it's going to cost you some more time and effort in the long run. Um, here's the back of the car, the trim, the lights and the bumper and stuff like that. Very, very rusty. Um, this car must have been a pretty, uh, pretty rough car to begin with. But once we get all the inner structure done, if you haven't seen the first video, I brought it home. I'm actually not doing a Roadrunner. I'm turning it into a Dodge Charger Daytona 1969, which is a two-door hardtop B-body. That's what I have, a two-door hardtop B-body. So all the Roadrunner sheet metal will go away. This will get 69 Dodge Charger quarter panels, which will tie in here. It'll get the, the flush fit rear window, 69 Charger tail pan, bumper, all that stuff. So all this Roadrunner stuff will go away. So all this Roadrunner stuff will go away. This will turn into a Charger. Uh, charger doors, charger front end, char 70 charger hood, and then the Janik Dodge Daytona nose and Dodge Daytona wing will go on to the charger stuff. So essentially I'm starting with a B-body hardtop chassis, floor, and roof and turning it into a 1969 charger. But most 1969 chargers are this rough if you're restoring them nowadays anyways because these cars are rot boxes. So you would put 
the B body floor in, you'd put the B body frame rails in, you'd hang the quarters depending on what B body it is, you know, and then go accordingly. So I'm not really any different than any other person doing a B body charger, road runner, satellite, all that stuff. It's pretty much the same. Uh, 66 to 70 B body floor plan. So it's 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 available and it's easy to work on. It just needs to take some time and save this car from the mess that it is that you're seeing right now. I've gone over some of the uh, issues in my project car here. There are some bonuses too. Like I said, I'm going to turn this into a Dodge Charger. So I've got this whole front clip and the doors I can sell as Roadrunner parts. Now there's some filler in the fenders and stuff and the filler in the doors and not the best. I got the bumper here. I got the trim. All this, all this is Roadrunner, 68, 69 Roadrunner parts. So I can sell some of this stuff to recoup some costs. You know, it's, it's not perfect by any stretch of imagination, but these parts for all these cars are, uh, are valuable nonetheless. The car came with an extra dashboard frame. This one is uh, the one to the car, and it looks like it's been sandblasted and painted black primer. It came with another dash that's stripped out just like this one. So I can sell a good dash frame. That's probably a couple hundred dollars for a B-body dash frame, I would guess. Um, the hood with the 440 emblems in it and the, you know, get some money back out of this stuff. So it's not, all in all, it's not too bad. I have um, other things that happen with this car. It has a rebuilt steering column in it, so that's good. So I, I knew what I was getting into when I bought this car. Uh, like I said, I paid a price point that I was happy with for what I got. And I just, I knew it had some aftermarket work done to it, or part work with aftermarket parts. And I just didn't know the, the quality to what it was done at. And as I showed you, once you get into some things, you know, don't pay all the money, top dollar. If, you know, don't take the seller's word for it. Say, oh, this car, you know, it's got this, 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 and this. Like, yeah, it does, but there's different ways things can be done. If, if this is done at a better shop that had done all the plug welds perfectly and like done nice welding and stuff like that. Actually, somebody knew how to weld. It would be, you know, I wouldn't be replacing that rear floor section. I wouldn't have to replace some rear rails. They probably would have been replaced as well. So you, all, you just got to look and see what you got. And this car is well within my ability to fix. And it was in the price range. So once again, I'm happy with that. This is just more for you guys watching at home. Say, you know, I'd like to get in a project car. And, you know, you get excited about things like oh it's got new floors it's got this and that like great you you really got to use your eyeballs to look at stuff and uh, if you don't know what you're looking at take somebody with you to go look at a car that knows what they're looking at like if if i was if i bought this car on the internet or you know didn't have any ability to work on it and i bought this car and then i took it to a shop like i said you you've got a lot of extra expense to straighten out the mess that somebody made to the underside of this car that could, you know, add months and thousands of dollars to the work required to restore a car like this. So you always want to be super careful what you're buying. Like I said, like no, no fault of the guys I bought it from. They just bought this from another guy that, you know, had it as part of another group. I think they said they bought it from some guy, a guy that died or something like that. Anyways, so no fault of the guys I bought this car from. They they just bought it. They wheel and deal in these cars, and they they bought it from somebody else like this. And they didn't have the work done. So uh, I knew, you know, it is what it is. I'm just saying here's a good example of how things get worked on and how they uh, work is done, but it's not done the best. So, anyways, the old '69 GTX here, soon to be a '69 Charger. It's still a great platform to build off of. It's got a good B-body platform, hard top, what I needed. I can skin it all with 69 Charger sheet metal uh, and then get the aftermarket Janik Daytona kit and turn this thing into a 1969, bam, Dodge Daytona. And it should be super cool. So good luck with your project. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And I'll see you on the next video.